Hey, and welcome to Summer Explosion, our last week together. I'm so thankful that you're here with me today. I have some great things to share with you today. And I hope you already have your bags at home and ready and eager to open them up. And I'm ready and eager to show you what's inside. But we'll do that in a little while. Will you go to the Lord in prayer with me first? Dear Lord, thank you so much for this time here, Lord. Time to uh, tell these boys and girls about you and your great love for us and how you are just so amazing. And we're so thankful, Lord, that we have you as our Heavenly Father. And I pray, Lord, that through this time together, that the children will come to know you in a personal and special way. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, so we learned so much this summer together. We've learned about camping. We've learned about Jesus. Can you remember some of the things you've already learned about camping this summer? Well, we've learned about what to bring on camping trips. We've learned about campfire stories. Uh, we've done campfire songs um, with Miss Amber. We've learned about sleeping bags and setting up your tent and about binoculars and compasses and how they help us find our way and all sorts of things. Can you think of some things that we've learned about? Okay, and we've made some things too, haven't we? We've made um, some binoculars and compasses and bird feeders. I've seen some of those on your doors and your um, side porches as I've come to deliver back. And let's see, we've eaten some cool snacks. So you've eaten s'mores and trail mix, and today you'll have a snack. Um, and there's one more, two more that you've had. I can't remember what they are, but I hope you've enjoyed all your snacks. And we've learned about Jesus. We've learned about his um, transfiguration, and that was found in Mark chapter 9. We've learned about the cost of following Jesus. And that was found in Matthew chapter 8. We learned about how Jesus is the bread of life. And that was found in the book of John chapter 6. And then last week we learned about the road to Emmaus and how Jesus appeared to uh, some fellas and they did not know who he was when they were walking. But then when Jesus broke the bread, their eyes were opened. They saw Jesus and then he disappeared. So that was after his death, and they saw him after his death. So we also learned about a motto that we talked about every week, and we did a sign language with it. So can you do that with me one last time? All right. Focus your life on Jesus. Let's do it one more time. Focus your life on Jesus. And that's what we need to do. Focus our life on Jesus. We also learn a Bible verse. Have you memorized it already? I get nervous when I say it um, by memory, but I'm pretty sure I have it uh, memorized. But it comes from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, and it says, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. And that was found right here in my Bible, Philippians chapter 1, 6. And if you notice, uh, I have Miss Abby. She's been my helper this summer here at the church. And she put that whole verse on the board outside the gym. So when you come by the gym or go into the gym here at the church, you'll see that verse out there. All right. So today... I have a lesson for you, our very last lesson. And just like a vacation, it's sad when vacations have to end. Um, you know, our camping time together is going to end. But we have some really good things that we've learned and that we can remember all throughout the year from our camping trips. You've made forts in your, um, at your houses and... You know, we are going to learn today about the Holy Spirit. Have you ever heard of the Holy Spirit before? The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. Okay, you have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So today we're going to learn about the Holy Spirit. And this is a gift that Jesus gave 
after um, his death and resurrection, after he was raised from the dead. And when he left, um, the Holy Spirit came. And that's what we're going to learn about today. And as believers, we can have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts and on fire to tell people about Jesus. Not literally on fire, but a spiritual fire. And so um, let's read from the book of Acts. So that is in the New Testament. And um, if you have your Bible, I'd love if you turn to the book of Acts with me. And it's going to be in chapter 2. Okay. And we're going to learn about Pentecost and how um, the Holy Spirit came. All right. Just listen if you can't read. When the day of Pentecost had arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house while where they were staying. <laughs> they saw tongues like flames of fire that separated and rested on each of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them, which tongues, um, different languages, and as the Holy Spirit allowed them to. Now there were Jews staying in Jerusalem, devout people from every nation under heaven. When this sound occurred, a crowd came together and was confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astonished and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that each of us can hear them in our own native language? And then it goes on to say, it names the different languages, different uh, types of people that are there in the languages. And then, um, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the magnificent acts of God in our own tongues. They were all astounded and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But some sneered and said, they're drunk on new wine. But they had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And on that very first time that the Holy Spirit came upon them, they saw them like tongues of fire, and they um, were able to speak in different languages. Now, the Holy Spirit does not always allow us to speak in different languages, um, and we can't see the Holy Spirit, but when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in us and guides us and leads us and shows us how to live like Jesus and love like Jesus. And I am so thankful that I have the Holy Spirit living in me because I believe in Jesus. I believe he is my Savior. I believe that he rose on, he died on the cross and was raised again to life. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I have done things that displease God. I know that um, I have thought things and said things that displease God. And we all are sinners. And when we um, confess that and we believe in Jesus and we know that he is our Savior, then we are believers. We pray a prayer of um and, and ask him into our hearts. And after that, uh, we can be baptized and show others that we are believers. And I'm so thankful to have the Holy Spirit living within me. And if you, you haven't already accepted Jesus as your Savior, and you're ready to tell someone that you want Jesus to come into your heart, and you want others to know that you believe in Jesus, tell somebody, tell an adult, tell a grown-up, whether it's your grandma or granddaddy, your mom or dad, or somebody here at the church. Um, it's, it's a wonderful, most amazing thing that you could ever do is to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. All right, so there's a few things that I wanted to tell you that came from the book, the lessons that I've done each week. Um, it says, 
that same fire comes to us when we accept Jesus as our Savior. Talking about the Holy Spirit. When you invite Jesus into your heart, it's the Holy Spirit that comes inside. The Holy Spirit connects us to Jesus. He allows us to pray directly to the Lord. He fills us with power to do the work of the Lord. And he lights our path so we can follow God's will. The Holy Spirit is a fire that can go with you wherever you go. All right, so I have a few questions because normally we do questions from last week, um, our lessons from last week. But since this is our last time together, I was going to ask you these in, um, in a little game form. So it's going to be, uh, you choose A, B, or C, okay? It's multiple choice. And let's see how much you've learned today about the Holy Spirit. You think you can do that? Okay. The Holy Spirit came on the day of, was it A, repentance, B, Pentecost, or C, Passover? Pentecost. If you said B, you're right. The next question. The Spirit came in the form of A, tongues of fire, B, water, or C, light. If you said A, tongues of fire, you're correct. Okay, question number three. Are you ready? The believers were able to A, speak the gospel in other languages, B, touch the Holy Spirit in the flesh, or C, walk on water. What do you think it is? If you said A, speak the gospel in other languages, you are correct. All right, question number four. Because of the Holy Spirit, a, we can pray directly to God. B, the early church began to grow. Or C, A and B. If you said C, you are correct. It is both of those. Last question. Who is the Holy Spirit? A, one of the Old Testament heroes. B, a saint. Or C, God's presence who dwells in our hearts. If you said C, you are correct. I love that definition. God's presence who dwells in our hearts. God within us. All right. So I know you're ready to open your bags and find out what's in there. So go ahead and do that. You have uh, a roll of papers that came uh, with it. And you can take that rubber band off. And uh, you've got a coloring sheet. You've got a word find. You've got, this is called camping vocabulary matching worksheet. So there's some items that you would take camping with you. And then I figured I would include this because maybe you and your family are going to go camping. And some of you already have. But here are some cool ideas for camping with kids packing list. So maybe there's some items that you hadn't thought of that you could take on a camping trip that maybe you need or would like to take. And then lastly, 10 things you need to follow, 10 rules you need to follow when you're doing a fire, um, a campfire, because campfires can be very dangerous, especially if you're camping outside and you have a fire going, you gotta make sure it's all the way out when you leave or when you go to bed because those um, embers, those little things that flicker can get caught in the trees and set a whole forest on fire. So you have to be careful. All right, so let's see what else is in your bag. You've got your snack. These are our little flames, our campfire flames. And you've got your juice. And you also got a plate with a whole bunch of different papers. And on this plate, you're going to make a campfire. Now, looking at this paper, you might think, well, how can I make a campfire out of a plate and paper? So I'm gonna send your parents a picture of what it's supposed to look like. And Miss Susan cut all these out and made, made it and took the picture. So yours can look like hers or you can make it look like yours your own your very own however you want to do it so that's your little craft for today and your snacks so i hope you enjoy that and i hope you've enjoyed our time together and i look forward to seeing you here at the church 
We'd love to have you. Um, we're going to have pre-K and kids focus starting back soon. We've got Awana starting back soon. But we have Children's Church every Sunday at 11 o'clock. We have Sunday school every Sunday at 945. Love to have you here at Calvary. All right. Well, I hope to see you soon. Bye.